In today's video, we're going to use the concept of phrases to learn the classic tune, The Rowan Tree. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There's a link below to the PDF document we have here, so go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. Ah, The Rowan Tree, one of the all-time classic melodies. This is one of my all-time favorite tunes, and with good reason, Wonderful melody. I'd even sing this one to my son when he was a baby to help try to get him to sleep. And I've been told specifically in Scotland it's the Rowan Tree and not the Rowan Tree. I've had a number of uh, older Scottish grandmas uh, get unhappy with me when I said the Rowan Tree back in the day. So I've been corrected. It's the Rowan Tree when talking about this tune. And if you've heard differently, please comment below and let us know. But there's a lot going on in this tune. It's got grips, it's got doublings, it's got D-throws, it's got burls, it's got just about everything in it. So this is fairly heavy duty, but I promise it won't be that bad. In episode 29 of my basic series here, I went over the grip and actually used this very melody, the Rowan Tree, to help teach you how to play that embellishment. And if you haven't checked that out, there's a link up here or in the description below to check out that video. But in that video, I used the grip between every note of this very melody so you could really get that embellishment under control. Now, this one, if you've done that, is going to be quite a bit easier. That is assuming you have your other embellishments ready. So you can see on the sheet here, we have the phrases listed out, and that's it. I don't actually have the entire tune written out. In my video on how to play Amazing Grace, I implored everyone to not look at the sheet music. In fact, I didn't even include it in the video. I said you should learn it by ear because it's such, well, a great melody, one everyone's already familiar with. So I kind of felt there was no need to look at it. And I want you to use your ear and your mind and all of that to learn it rather than your eyes. We're gonna kind of try a hybrid approach here where you will be able to see the sheet music to the phrases, but I want you to try to hold it all together in your noggin when you put the whole tune together. So let's get started with the first phrase right here. And you can see here, I call it phrase one question to dad. Now, I know that's kind of a goofy name, but my reason for this is there is phrase one question to dad, and then you can see phrase one question to mom, two lines underneath it, and they're almost the same, save the final note. So they were thematically linked. So I thought I would name them something that might be memorable. And then each case, there's a separate answer, the answer from dad, and then the answer from mom. And I thought, while silly perhaps, maybe it'd be a way for you to remember what the phrases are when it's time to put them all together. So let's start with that phrase one, question to dad. It starts with a classic introductory cadence of G grace note to low A, B, and a grip to C. In fact, this is so common, I've already made a video on how to do this specific thing. You can check that out up here or again in the description below, but let's go over it again right now. So it's gonna be a G grace note to A, but this B is going to be quite short because the grip itself takes its time away from the note before it, not the note after it. So while the grip appears to be next to the C, it's gonna be taking its time from that B over here. And because of that, that 16th note B, which was already only a 16th note long, is gonna be even shorter. So we're gonna treat it more kind of almost like a loose grace note, if you will, rather than an actual note. So we're gonna do a G grace note to A, a quick B to low G, tap a D grace note to the second low G to make it a grip, and lift to C. It's important that the B not be too long, but it's also important that we hear both low Gs in that embellishment. We don't want to hear anything like where it's so quick or tight that you don't hear two clean, distinct low Gs. So once you've gotten to that C, you're going to hold it. You can see it's a dotted quarter note here, so it's going to be a beat and a half long before we separate it with a G grace note and then one more grip from C to C. So the G grace note on C and then the C grip to C is fairly straightforward because you're already on a C. So pinky's already down. You just lower to low G, tap out a D grace note to a second low G and lift to yet another C. From there, we'll do an E grace note down to B, then back up with a C doubling up to an E, and then we'll tap out an A between those E's to separate those notes into two. 
And remember in that doubling from B, G raised note to C, D grace note on C, we want to hear two very clear C's with nice percussive grace notes. That G grace note is a percussive attack on the first C, and the D grace note is a second percussive motion to separate the C's. While they look the same length, they are not. That C in the middle is actually longer than the grace notes on either side in that embellishment. So that's the phrase one question to dad, but what's dad's response? Let's find out. So here, we're going to start with a high A doubling. We're going to have the high A. We're going to sweep our thumb. I don't care what direction. I tend to sweep up. Most folks sweep down. But you'll be on high A. You'll sweep your thumb. Then we're going to do what is often called the half doubling because we're coming from an A. So we can't put a G grace note on the top of this F doubling. So we're going to go just straight from high A to F and tap out one percussive G grace note to separate the F into two Fs. Then we'll lower to an E, G grace note back up to an F, and then another high A doubling, A with the sweep of the thumb. Then another half, F doubling taking you down again from high A down to an F, quick chirpy grace note to a second F, then a G grace note to E, and another tap to low A to separate those E's, similar to what we did at the question to dad above. So now let's try putting the question to dad and the answer to dad together. At this stage of the game, I wouldn't worry about a metronome yet. We will definitely be breaking it out before the end of the day. But for now, I would just try to play it with approximate rhythm, meaning I want the long notes long, I want the short notes short and everything else somewhere in the middle. But for now, it's more about getting the gist of the melody. We'll get it properly timed here momentarily. So now on to the phrase one question to mom. So this is almost exactly the same as I said earlier to the phrase one question to dad. But this time it's going to go up with an F doubling at the end rather than a tap to an E. So you'll be on that final E. And then G grace note to F, second G grace note on F for the F doubling. Again, those two G grace notes being nice and percussive with the two Fs being quite clear. And then mom's answer to the question. It's gonna start on a quick E, and then an E doubling on another relatively quick note down to a C. Bum, did it, da. E, E doubling, C. To a nice long C. Then from there, you'll go down to a B doubling, G grace note to B, D grace note on B. Then, this part's a little tricky and a little different than a previous version of this tune. I had a simplified version of this in lesson 10 of the basic series where I had it go down to an A. So if you're familiar with that, know that this one's going to be just a bit different. We're actually going to be going now with a D grace note up to C. So from B, D grace note to C, both up, these down, but make sure that's nice and quick. Cha, cha, not B, -o, but cha. So again, you're on B, D grace note to C. Now we'll do a high G grace note down to a low A, and then whatever burl you do. It could be a seven, it could be an up, down, it could be a tap curl, whatever works for you. And there is a video for you to help with burls up there, but that will end this phrase. Let's give it a go. So now let's go to the question to mom and then the answer from mom. So now, before we try to put this all together, let's go ahead, try it with the metronome. We're gonna do the part one written right over here, which again is the question to dad, the answer from dad, the question to mom, and the answer from mom. And again, I name them sillily. You can rename them if that's just a little too goofy for you. But again, I'm trying to get them to stick in your head about what they might be and how they might be related to each other. So I'm using the Soundbrenner wearable metronome here, and I have the metronome at 70. We're actually gonna start on beat four for the top of this whole thing. You can see there is pickup notes right there. Those are on beat four with the downbeat with that grip to C happening on the one, the accented one that you might see on the watch here if it comes through on, on camera. One, two, three. If 
that's too quick for you, go ahead, slow it down. The tempo really doesn't matter so much as your ability to play with the metronome, to play it in time. So first, get the approximate rhythm down, get the phrases under control under your fingers with all the technical bits right, and then when you can do that, add that metronome, figure out where all the beats are going to land. And I have a counting exercise video up here that may just help you if you're having a problem getting these tunes to work with your face and your brain with the rhythms. This video up here may well help you. Also link in description below. And we can see just looking at the structure of the tune over here that now that we've learned the question to mom and mom's answer, that that's actually going to be the second half of part two. So by learning that, you've learned half the tune just by learning mom's question and answer there. So we only have two more phrases. And here, I didn't get kitschy or anything. These are two beautiful phrases, but they're not related to anything else in the tune. So I just named them phrase two and phrase three. Let's go over them now. So phrase two starts again on the upbeat before beat one. So on the and of four, we're gonna come in with a G grace note on E. Then we're gonna separate that E with a tapping motion to low A. And again, that's done just because you're lowering one finger and these are already down. Then up to high A, and then we're gonna sweep that high A into two. Don't do this too quickly though. This is not a high A doubling. This is just a sweep between two A's. Bum, 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 bum. You wanna make sure that that A before the sweep is long enough to be heard. Then, one of the notes that's not played too terribly commonly in beginning pipe music, a high G. On this high G, when you're coming from the high A down to the high G, make sure the ring finger is coming up. Now, when I play a high G, I have my hand in this kind of position here. It's not on it, but it's also not super high. I want to be able to readily go between high A and G and not have to move this finger too terribly much. But now that you're on that high G, you're going to tap out an F to separate the G into two. And then to emphasize the next F you're actually going to, we're going to do an A grace note to F. So from high G, thumb will come off. This will not come on. The ring finger will not come on for the A grace note. Go down to F, and then we'll separate that F with an E tap with that middle finger. Let's give it a try. And then finally, phrase three, the last phrase of the tune starts with a high A doubling. So A, sweep the thumb down to a half E doubling. Again, I think it's a silly name, but it's what they tend to be called. So from high A, you'll go down to an E, and then the F grace note will separate out the two E's, just like a normal E doubling. Again, no G grace note at the top because you can't readily stick a G grace note between a high A and an E. So high A, sweep, E, separate that with an F, then up to an actual F, G grace note to an F, E, D throw, and for now I'm going to be using the light D throw to a C, and then here we're going to do a C doubling from C. So you're already on C, you're just going to separate it with a G grace note and a D grace note, tap, tap. And then down to a B doubling. And that C, after the C doubling, nice long note, you can see it's a half note, longest note in the tune right there. You're going to kind of float on that C for a nice long time before heading down with that B doubling. See that C just really floated nice and long. All right, let's keep this metronome at 70 and try phrases two and three together and we'll see how this sounds. Again, I'm coming in on the and of four. So I'll say one, two, three, four. And then right after four, I'll come in for that E that starts the whole thing. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> And then from there, you go back to the question to mom and then mom's answer. And that would be the whole tune. When you can play each of these phrases well, good, cleanly, accurately, with a metronome, properly timed, properly embellished, it's time to put it onto your practice pipes. And as for practice pipes, I really do think they make a world of difference in helping you make the transition from the practice channel to a full set of Highland pipes. And again, brand doesn't really matter. They can be the RG Hardy twist trap set, kitchen pipes, the fireside pipes by Gibson. Shepard makes a set of mouth blown small pipes. There are a ton on the market, the McCallum folk pipes. They're all great, but just something that coordinates your blowing, squeezing, everything and that you're making sound with a drone. It's all great. And in this case, I'm going to keep using my wearable metronome so I can feel the beat while playing along. But these pipes are quiet enough. You should be able to even just turn up your metronome to a volume where you'd be able to play along with the metronome 
on your pipes. go everybody the round tree classic tune a lot going on but in the context of this tune none of it to me feels overwhelming it's a very natural place for all of these embellishments to fall but it's really putting together all of the skills you've been building up over the course of this series grips doublings burls throws it's all here in a great package and do your best to not look up the full sheet music try to commit these phrases to memory Learn it with your heart, learn it with your ears, learn it with your mind. Try not to learn it with your eyes if you can help it. If worse comes to worse, you can make another copy of this and just cut it out and kind of paste it together like a ransom note. Now it just got weird. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something on this video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. You'll see names of folks scrolling up now and a special shout out to Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. But these are people that contribute to the channel monthly. They often get early access to videos and other perks. So go please check out my Patreon. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with things like hats and hoodies and t-shirts. So go check that out and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Well, thank you again so much for watching, everybody. My name is Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.